All right, looks like it's about 10. I want to thank you all for joining me on this beautiful Friday morning um, and welcome you to today's webinar. So today we're talking about the essentials of data acquisition for non-engineers. Um, so when I first thought of the idea for today's webinar, I imagined it as a kind of learning exercise for myself. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Colin McLeod. I'm the digital... Marketing. <laughs> right, good afternoon. Thank you. Um, right, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Colin McLeod, the digital marketing specialist here at ICP DAS USA. And if that tells you anything, it should indicate that my background is not in engineering or computer programming. I've had to learn a lot about data acquisition since I started here about two years ago, and I've learned enough in that time that I can at least teach the basics to people like myself, uh, those who have a less technical education, or those who are simply unfamiliar with some of the concepts in what can be admittedly a very opaque field. So the scope for today's talk is to impart a basic lesson on data acquisition, basic but hopefully thorough. I'll be walking you from the core concepts and through the setup of a small data logging application and trying to do all of that in about 30 minutes. <clears throat> so let's take a look at our agenda for today. Again, the title for today's presentation is DAQ, and that's Data Acquisition for Non-Engineers. A little clunky as titles go, but accurate. Uh, essential components and how to use them, which means we will be breaking things down to their basic components. First, we'll be talking about some basic concepts and definitions that you'll need to understand before we can move on. Then we'll get into the kinds of data acquisition equipment that's available to you and how to select the right components based on your needs and the scope of your project. Then we'll look at how to make use of the equipment you already have. I think it's important for non-engineers to understand that uh, data acquisition applications don't necessarily have to run on a lot of bespoke single-use equipment. Actually, I'd like to demonstrate that DAQ applications can be made with lots of off-the-shelf and familiar components. So this segues nicely, nicely into the next bulletin into the next bullet, which is how to use just about any Windows PC as a data logger. And finally, we'll look at some of our data logging software that can help make that happen. Um, all right. Before we dive in, just a little bit about us. ICP DAS was founded in 1993 and is located in Sinchu, Taiwan. ICP DAS USA, that's us, was founded in 2001 to support the North and South American markets. We're located in Lomita, California. We have over 200 R&D engineers, and we work closely with them to develop new products and to support our customers. Most of our products are Rojas compliant, meaning they're lead free. We are ISO 9001 certified here in the US, SGS certified in the UK, and we're a Windows embedded partner. But let's get into the uh, into the talk itself. So let's get down to basics. Uh, data acquisition is the process of sampling signals that measure real-world physical conditions and converting the resulting samples into digital numeric values that can be manipulated by a computer. Data acquisition systems, abbreviated as DAQ, typically convert analog waveforms into digital values for processing. The components of data acquisition systems include sensors to convert physical parameters to electrical signals, signal conditioning circuitry to convert sensor signals into a form that can be converted into digital values, analog to digital converters to convert conditioned sensor signals to digital values, and the next thing you need to know is what a data acquisition module is. A data acquisition module is any device designed to collect field sensor data. A DAQ module is an intermediary device between you and the sensors. Most sensor output uh, sorry, most sensors output data in a raw format that can't be read by a PC or a tablet or a phone. So the DAQ module takes that sensor data and presents it in a format that can be understood by your PC or your controller so that you can read it and organize it in whatever way is useful to you. So in a nutshell, data acquisition is just taking real-world conditions such as a, a change in temperature and converting that into first into a digital signal um, <clears throat> or, sorry, rather an electrical signal, we then convert it with the DAQ module into a digital signal that the computer can read, and then you log it on your PC or, or, or your controller in a form that is human-readable. So, um, 
really is that uh, that simple. So the next thing you need to understand are data types, or rather sensor uh, sensor input data types. So there are two major kinds of sensor data that any DAQ system collects. These are analog and digital sensor data. Analog data is differential, it's volt and current based, whereas digital data is on-off, and it's, uh, it's either on-off or it comes in pulses. Analog data tends to come from sources like a thermistor, where the current changes in relation to the temperature. So a thermistor is a type of temperature sensor that works using a thermal resistor. And in the most common thermistors called NTCs or negative temperature coefficient thermistors, resistance goes down as their temperature goes up. So the current output by this kind of sensor increases in correlation with the increase in temperature. So the goal of a data acquisition system for those thermistors then would be to um, measure that change in current compared to the current at a baseline temperature. Uh, digital sensor data is, like I said, either on-off. And uh, unsurprisingly, this is a useful datum to collect if you want to know machine status, if a machine is on or off. Uh, but it can tell you other things, digital input um, or what it can tell uh, tell you other things. Um, so types of digital input include uh, just an on-off status or a digital counter. Um, so when you're selecting a data acquisition module, this is the first thing that you're going to look for. You need to think about the types of sensors you have and what kind of data you are trying to collect. DAQ modules come in a very wide array of I.O. configurations, and you can get either digital or analog DAQ modules, and you can get modules that do both. You can also get modules that are specifically designed for specific sensors, such as thermistors, strain gauge, counters, or uh, pulse width mod modulation. That's another type of uh, digital input and output. And those uh, specially designed modules will usually be more accurate for use with those specific sensors than a general purpose analog or a digital module, say a uh, universal analog module. Once you've thought about the types of data you want to collect, you'll need to think about how the sensor data gets to you, the user. So let's say you've chosen your sensors and know what kind of DAQ module you want. You also need to think about how you're going to read all that data. In a lot of cases, this is going to be a PC. We're going to be done on a PC. And in, in the example we'll talk about a little bit later, it's going to be a PC. Uh, but you can also log data on an industrial touchscreen, a tablet, a panel PC. You can display live trends on a monitor if your main concern is just seeing the data as it comes in. There are a lot of different ways you can display and manipulate the data you've collected but it's almost always going to involve a Windows PC at some point. So the two main types of communication that we're going to be talking about today are serial and Ethernet communication. There are also wireless DAQ modules that use a Wi-Fi or Zigbee wireless network to transmit data. They are somewhat less common, and today we're just going to be focusing on wired communication. So we'll start with Ethernet. I believe most of you will be familiar with what an Ethernet cable looks like. Uh, you probably have them snaking around your home and your office. And yes, the same, uh, same Ethernet cable you use for an office network or the one that runs between the modem and the router in your house, it works just fine for a data acquisition system. So when you use Ethernet DAQ modules, each one is assigned its own IP address, just like the devices on a home network. And if you want to use a lot of them on the same network, you will need to use an Ethernet switch or router. Uh, again, just like the one you have at home. So serial communication might be less uh, right. So serial communication uh, might be less familiar to you. Although if you have an older PC, it will probably have a serial communication port built onto it somewhere. On a newer PC, you are going to need to use a converter to convert from the industrial serial line to a uh, communi communication type that's going to be most useful to you. Probably uh, USB. Um, and a little bit later, we'll be talking about our USB to RS-485 converter, the TM-7561. But back to serial communication, there are a couple different wiring standards used in industrial DAQ, the most common being twisted pair insulated copper wiring. Uh, 
So at this level, you don't need to worry too much about the different wires, wiring standards. Just be aware that the two most common are RS-232 and RS-485. So to reiterate, the physical layer of your DAQ system comes in true broad categories, serial and ethernet. The next thing to remember is the communication protocol used with this physical layer. Uh, again, you don't need to know all the specifics, just remember that a protocol is a method that machines use to communicate over a given medium. The most widely used protocol in industrial data acquisition is called Modbus RTU. This is a serial protocol that works on RS-232 and RS-485. Uh, for reference, one of the most common Ethernet protocols is called Modbus TCP, which works, again, on your standard Ethernet cabling. So other common communication protocols include Ethernet IP and BACnet. Uh, both of those are Ethernet protocols. On the serial side, you have uh, Profibus and Hart. Again, common serial protocols. But now you should have the three things you need to identify the kind of DAQ module that you need. You need to know the types of sensor input that you want to read. You need to know the physical communication medium for the connection between your PC or your control system and the modules. And you need to know the communication protocol that works over that medium. But now we're going to get into selecting the I.O. module itself. <clears throat> and you should know, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. You should know everything that you need to know to make the selection. So I mentioned the example of thermistors earlier. <clears throat> Let's say we have an application where I need to catch data from multiple thermistors. Uh, this could be a cold storage situation, food processing, a greenhouse or any situation where I want to monitor the temperature in different areas around the same local site. And let's also say that I need a couple of digital output channels. So the simplest kind of digital output is a relay closure. Uh, this is very useful if you want to turn on a light, start a fan, or stop a machine in start or stop a machine in response to sensor data. Uh, for example, <clears throat> For example, when you sense that the temperature in your greenhouse has gone above an acceptable level or below, you, uh, you can start a fan. Or if you want to shut off an oven once it reaches the appropriate temperature, or if you need to set, on, soft, set off an alarm or warning light when an area reaches an unsafe temperature, all good examples of something you can do with a very simple data logging and control system. And as luck would have it, I have just the module in mind for this. But let's look through our selection table, because uh, I think this is, is a useful example. So we talked about we need th thermistor input. And there are a couple other type of, of uh, temperature sensors. There's a th thermocouples down here in the M M711. But today we're going to be looking at the M7005. And we want it because it has eight thermistor input, which is a type of analog input, and six uh, digital output. So it has everything we need for uh, those ex examples that I mentioned before. But if you are going to uh, buy products from us, or if you're one of our distributors, one of our resellers, this is what our selection tables look like, and they are very handy for f quickly finding uh, what you need. So these are available in our catalog and on our website. And if you need help finding those, please, please feel free to email us at sales at icp-usa.com. But here on the left column, you have the model number and the, uh, you have the section for the analog channels. So we have a couple different selections here, four channel analog input, eight channel analog input on the M7005, one and, and six. And they go from anywhere from one channel up to 20 channels. Uh, analog input. And on the right hand side we have the digital channels. <clears throat> we got, uh, yeah, five digital in, four di digital out. So if you're wondering that's what those mean. Analog in, analog out, digital in, digital out. And as a quick summary of the uh, of what type of uh, input and output these are. So for the M75 it ha just has digital output, six channels of open collector digital output. Let's take a look at it. All right, 
So the remote I.O. module that we have selected for this application is the M7005. This module has eight channels of thermistor input, so you can connect up to eight thermistors. And the module has a bunch of presets for common thermistor types, or you can go into the configuration and uh, define your own uh, settings for your thermistor. It also has six digital output channels, and these are open collector type, which is a kind of output relay that either acts as a ground or an open circuit. Uh, but that's not super important right now. The other important thing to know is the protocol and wiring specification. So the M7005, like all M7K modules, is a Modbus RTU module that works over RS-485. Now, some of my more experienced colleagues tell me that this is far and away the most popular combination of, uh, of communication specs that is RS-485 and Modbus RTU. I'm here to tell you that is also true in my experience, that when uh, most of our customers come to us, they are uh, looking for something that communicates over RS-485 using Modbus RTU. So the final thing to consider after you've chosen your DAQ module is how you're actually going to get it to talk to your control system or to your PC. Though a module like the M7005 is what's called a Modbus slave, and the only way to retrieve data from it is to send a query from a Modbus master. So uh, in this example, the Modbus master is going to be a plain old desktop Windows PC, uh, just like the ones in almost every office in the world. The only bit of special equipment that you need is a converter that will enable your PC to talk to RS-485 devices. So like I said earlier, older PCs will have an RS-232 port, which means you don't need any extra equipment if you are uh, communicating on an RS-232 line. Um, you can just pl uh, plug it right in and use some of our software to find your modules. But in this case, we are using RS-485, and it is the most common uh, wiring specification and so we are going to need a device like the TM7561, which is going to allow you to convert between RS-485 and USB. Okay, so now we are going to look at how to find and connect your I.O. module. So uh, now you should know how to select an I.O. module and how to connect it to your uh, PC. Actually, physically connecting the module to the converter and the converter to the PC should be pretty self-explanatory, so we won't uh, need to go into that. But once you get everything hooked up, you'll need to find and configure your M7005 module. And luckily for you, we include a free piece of software with our modules that you can use to find them on your network. Software that comes with the M7005 is called Decon Utility, and uh, Decon is another kind of communication protocol that will work with the M7K modules, And uh, but the software is designed to work with uh, Modbus RTU just as well. So this comes in a standard Windows executable file that you can get from our website. You run and install it on your computer, uh, and then you first thing you do is choose the COM port you are communicating with, so you would find your USB port and select that. And then uh, and then you search for the module, which is a uh, pretty simple search function. In this, uh, in this example, there's only one module on the network, so finding it should be a piece of cake. Uh, you won't need to do any special settings. You can just search and then find it. Uh, but if you are looking for a specific module, Decon Utility comes with a lot of search criteria. So you can search by the type of module, you can search by baud rate, you can search by uh, uh, <clears throat> IO channels, and uh, there's just a bunch of different options that you can use to make sure you're communicating with the correct module. So once you have found it, um, you need to get into, you can access the configuration settings from Decon Utility. And for our modules, we have profiles that can get you well on your way when it comes to configuring a module. Um, but this is the one step in the process where if you are not an, an engineer or a programmer, you don't have a technical background, you may need help when it comes to configuring, um, uh, configuring the module. But we do also provide fairly extensive documentation that can guide you through the setup and configuration process with Decon Utility.
So once the module has been found on your network and configured and you can confirm that it's working, you can start to view and log your sensor data. And again, hey, lucky for you, when you purchase an ICP-USA remote IO module, we can uh, provide you with a free license for our Easy Data Logger, which is a Windows PC-based data logging and uh, control software. So when you purchase an IO module, we can provide you with a free license that works with up to 64 IO tags, certainly enough for a small data acquisition system. An easy data logger is fairly easy to use. Again, we provide extensive documentation and tutorials on how to use it. We have a pretty recent video on how to use it. It's available through our YouTube channel, so if you want to know a little bit more, more about that, please feel free to email me at sales at icp-usa.com. Um... And uh, right, so it's a little bit more complex than we have time to get into with this talk. Um, But again, uh, we do have uh, separate videos and uh, that are just on easy data logger and quite extensive quick start guides and manuals for that. So it's very, it's uh, pretty easy to get started. So what Easy Data Logger actually does is that it allows you to graphically interpret sensor data. It allows you to store it in databases. Uh, It allows you to view live trend graphs and to program some basic control functions like the ones we talked about earlier, such as turning on ventilation in response to sensor data, starting and stopping machinery, and the like. Uh, But in general, Easy Data Logger or any data logging program is going to be the user side of your data acquisition system. And this is where you're going to actually receive and interpret the data from your sensors. So quickly, I wanted to look at uh, some of our other data logging software options. So the next level up from Easy Data Logger is called eLogger. It is a slightly more complex, more feature-rich data logging and control product that we recommend for small to medium-sized data acquisition systems. The other product we recommend is Indusoft, uh, for which we are a, a seller. Uh, the next level up from eLogger is Indusoft. And Indusoft has a lot more features. It allows you to scale a data acquisition and industrial control project from a medium size to a very, very large size, uh, possibly incorporating multiple sites in different geographic areas. So SCADA is, uh, includes data logging and data acquisition as part of its function, but uh, it stands for supervisory control and data acquisition. So it is more of a complete industrial control and uh, data management and data acquisition program. And uh, just a couple weeks ago, I did a, a Lunch and Learn, uh, which is a shorter webinar on a very specific subject. Uh, so I did a, a, a quick Lunch and Learn on, on Indusoft. So if you are interested in that, I can send you a link, send you uh, so you can, you can see that. It's also available on our YouTube channel. Um, so that about wraps it up for today. I just want to uh, conclude and go over the steps that we learned. Um, just for uh, setting up a basic data acquisition system. Uh, First, you have to choose a remote IO module based on the type of sensors, this type of data you want to collect, the wiring that it communicates over, and the protocol that it uses to communicate. We also went over how to use the selection tables, which is uh, um, very useful if you are one of our customers or if you are one of our sellers who needs to find a... uh, find a product quickly. Those are very, very useful. Uh, Then you have to decide if you need a converter, and we looked at the TM7561. Finally, I've talked a little bit about uh, decon utility, how to find and configure the module on your network, and then talked about some data logging options. So hopefully that gives, that should give you a pretty broad, um, a pretty thorough overview of what data acquisition is like, trying to demystify some of these terms a little bit. So hopefully you learned something today. We're going to move into our Q&A session now. Um, So if you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the Q&A box now.